Welcome to the Trailer Island Podcast. We hope you've got your tissues. Yeah, I uh, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, yeah, I do. Did you wear through your tissues? Uh, I, ha- I have a hanky. You have a... Oh. A gentleman's a gentleman. sad movie device. That's right, that's right. I dab How? my eyes with my mucus. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. How environmentally sustainable of you to keep your tears... How unhealthy, though. Possibly. What, I think like you're holding on to the pain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You should. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't bottle it up. Well, so you should probably wash your hanky more often then. Uh, yeah. oh, are we getting into a territory here where my unhappiness is now being symbolised by my dirty hankies as well? Yes. Okay. That is what's happened. In fact, I I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> my <laughs> handkerchief represents my level of happiness. <laughs> You can tell how mad I am by the crustiness of my hanky. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Hey, what are we here to do? We are the Trailer Island Podcast, and we compare films and their trailers. Did the film deliver what the trailer promised? And I am Alex, and I'm joined by... Matthew. <laughs> Sorry. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? So oh, I just, many... I, I don't... I don't. I had to wipe my nose. Oh, right. So many sound effects, and it's just we're such a we're a visceral visceral experience, aren't we? Are. Mm. We are three D sound. We are. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Yes, we are the Trail Island Podcast, and this week we it's a bit of a request, and it's for a film that came out in twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Does that qualify? I, I think it's twenty twenty one. You think now. it qualifies? All I right. Think so. so I think this. I think it's fair enough. We ask the captain with the time tug, if you could go, please. I, I do have had a lot of surgeries. That doesn't surprise me at all. Thank you, captain. And you're we, looking wonderful. You are looking very pretty these days. <laughs> I got handsome over age. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, sure, sure. All right. Well, um, how are the barnacles going, by the way? A lot of them look like Owen Wilson. <laughs> They're celebrity lookalike barnacles. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Captain. Thank you for bringing out the time tug because, yes, this is a film from 2017, which is warranted, requiring to bring it back yep. from the past. So yes. that's what the time tug is there for because it's been a while since we've we've tugged a film. <laughs> so we're bringing it from the... It's been a while since we tugged anything. <laughs> So we bring it back from from a while ago and um, bringing it into the now. So that's what the time tug is there for, just in case we had forgotten our manners as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, so who would like to introduce the films? I Jake? will uh, this week because otherwise we'll be here forever. Uh, this week we are doing Wonder. My name is Augie Pullman. Next week I start fifth grade. And since I've never been to real school before, I'm pretty much totally petrified. I'll see you later. Okay. You don't want to walk up with your parents because it's not cool. But you're cool. I know I am, but technically most dads aren't. Neither are these helmets. Dear God, please make them be nice to him. I know I'm not an ordinary 10-year-old kid. I've had 27 surgeries. They've helped me to breathe, to see, to hear without a hearing aid, but none of them have made me look ordinary. The incubator, bunch of murders. Oh, and this is an eraser. You know what an eraser is, right? Look at his face. I've never seen anything that ugly in my life. If I looked like him, I'd swear. I'd put a hood over my face. I know you don't always like it, but I love it. It's my son's face. You are not ugly, Augie. You just have to say that because you're my mom. Because I'm your mom, it counts the most because I know you the most. Hi, you don't have to do this. I don't know what you're talking about, Augie. You don't have to pretend is all I'm saying. Augie! Okay, I'm really sorry. Why are you sitting here then? Because I want some nice friends for a change. Me too. Who is it that I aspire to be? That is the question that we should be asking ourselves all the time. Hey, Jack, come sit here. In a sec. I'd like to be able to control the weather. That would be your superpower? That sounds pretty lame. What would you do? I'd be invisible. You're the toughest kid in that school. Show them. You can't blend in when you were born to stand out. Where is that 
about having plastic surgery. Dude, this is after plastic surgery. It takes a lot of work to look this good. I... He's deformed, by the way, just so you guys can... <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Before we get <laughs> thank you, on the face. Yes, that is the premise of this movie. Is this kid has unfortunately been born um, with a, a defect of some kind? Well, which I, think, they, I don't think they ever established exactly what it is, but it's multiple uh, medical issues that have resulted in many surgeries yeah. to his face. Now, I hadn't seen this film until we decided to do it for the podcast because it was requested. Mm-hmm. And we'll get. Uh, we should we do, say who requested it? No, we'll get to that. We'll finish, get to that. Finish okay. your point first. Um, I remember now. Why I didn't see it when that trailer first came out. And that is because that trailer, in my opinion, is a bad trailer. Mm. I agree. It basic, it's, what, it's a trailer that even though at the time I hadn't seen the movie, I knew that I'd seen the whole movie in that trailer. It leaves nothing to the imagination. It literally has the ending of the movie yeah. in there. Yeah. I understand look, it's very uplifting. It's very sweet. You get, You do see you know, a lot of the... Um, characters and the situations that are going to unfold but having watched the movie now I'm angry at that trailer because I think it does mm. a disservice to the to how good this movie is and not enough Mandy Patinkin in that trailer in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> Mandy Patinkin plays the principal of he the school does, yes. that he goes to uh, I, probably, the, probably the first thing that I want to bring up is that Julia Roberts is officially my favourite movie mum <laughs> she doesn't do enough and she should uh, because you know we we got a lot of Julie Roberts up until like 2005. You mean films in general or yeah? Movie but, yeah, but, okay. But since then, she has done Diddly Squat. Like she's mostly a producer now. It's quite aggressive stance. Steve well, I admit. want her to be in more I, things. And, but maybe she's living the life that she wants to live. I'm sure she probably is, <laughs> but it's not doing what I say. Uh, right. Yes. And I want more Julia Roberts. I want more J Rob. Okay, I want them to release No Time to Die, but I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. I want to, I want to trade Emma Roberts for Julia Roberts. I want to get the aunt back in the game. <laughs> I do. Uh, you, okay, this is this is taking a very uh, aggressive turn that mm. I wasn't expecting. So, Augie, uh, <laughs> yes. August, uh, was born with a facial deformity. They they got a facial difference, or I can't. They use a different word for it. And yeah, there was a scientific disease name they used for it at the start. Oh of the no, film, no, they. They use it like a, a more PC term to describe it. And I'm sure some people are screaming down their uh, f- devices right now. Is this? And he he's been homeschooled. I think for what we would say his primary school life. Yeah. And he's now so. going to first year of what we would describe as high school. Well, I guess his high school for I them. So. Well. They yeah. still looked a little young to me to be in like. But I, and I don't know the the American school system. Primary so. school, middle school, and then high school. And I think that's okay. the middle school that he's going to. That would make sense. That yeah. would. Okay. Make sense. Yeah. Right. Which right, I think right. is like year six, seven, eight. Okay. Yep. So so he's going to school for the first time, and he is very self conscious about how he looks, particularly around other kids. And I guess it's it's that journey, isn't it? about him trying to uh, discover himself in this new world. But it's not, when I say that, it's not just about him, is it? It's about the people around him. And we get those unique mm, perspectives. Yeah. And I thought that was a really clever thing that this um, this film did. And um, it the, the person who requested it said that it was similar but not similar to the way that Dunkirk is edited, where you see the same thing from different yeah. perspectives. It doesn't do that, but you do get... It sort of establishes uh, uh, you get a, sing- a single day of Augie's first day of mm-hmm. school, and then you get then you start getting other people's sort of perspectives and also just how they're feeling about the whole yeah. thing. And it, you do, and the movie moves along in real time. It's not like it's happening in parallel action, but you do get this wonderful sense of a genuine, real world. I think uh, the the criticism I have there, and it, it's it's it is it's a brilliant sort of structure because they're. Showing characters do some mildly bad, terrible things, and then they're swapping to their perspective yeah. to demonstrate why they're doing these like not so great things. I don't think it goes hard enough on it because okay. there are some actual villains in this movie that sort of, I mean, if you just want them to be villains, that's fine. You don't have to need you don't need to you know explain their point of view, but. This movie was trying to do that. It was trying to explain multiple points of view, how mm. people feel, what they're going through at the moment. Um, and it's just it's not just Augie's story. And I feel like maybe we should extend that same courtesy to the to the antagonists of this film. Yeah, sure. We're we saying they don't get enough screen time. Well, I'm just saying that we don't get to see a lot of the bully's life, you know? 
No, we, yeah, we do get insight. Like, you're right. I mean, the, the film is still, I think, quite focused. Augie is our main character. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think that if the movie... This is a, about two hours almost, exactly two hours this yeah. film. And I think if the movie had devoted the same amount of time to those, those antagonists as it does to Augie, I think the, the film would, would balloon quite quickly. I think we get just enough of a taste, especially that there's, there's let's call him our, our main antagonist, the main child bully for the majority of the movie. You do get a sense at certain points, especially when he's um, caught out having done something awful um, later on in the movie, that his home life isn't very good. Yeah. And, that, and so that's why he's acting out. And, and I, I, in that moment, I did feel sorry for him. I yep. think the movie very successfully without trying to force it went, yes, he's, he's, a bad person for doing these things, but there's also a reason why he's done them. And it was, and it just, it just was enough to make you think like, Oh, maybe with a different situation, he could have been a really nice person. I, I maybe, I think tonight I'm the cynical one. Okay. Uh, and that's because this, this film, and I'm, I'm usually, it does, it ends with a happy, happy ever after in, in, in the most generic sense of the word, like everyone gets their happy, happy ending. And I'm not used to that happening. Right. Well, I mean, we talked about Luca uh, some time back, and the ending to that is is almost a little bit tragic because he and his best friend are splitting up. He's going to school. It's still a happy ending, but it's still got that That's sort true. of undercurrent of sadness. This one is everyone lives happily ever after, and I'm I'm not used to that. I'm really not used to it. Okay. I thought I, it's it's a little it's it's jarring for me. I think. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to tr- like just try and shoot down your opinion. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to think about how to articulate. Uh, I completely agree with you. Yes, mm. it is a bit fairy tale in the way that everyone gets their happy ending. But I, I think the movie. I, I, I don't. This might be a stretch, and I've only seen the movie once. But I think the movie could be into the t- getting into the territory of, despite people's differences, if y- you can actually all just get along. Mm. And I, I know that might be a bit of, bit of a stretch. That's probably not what the movie's about. But I, I did feel it didn't. I still didn't mind that everyone got a happy ending at the end. I felt okay. like they'd all earned their happy ending. Oh, I do too. It's yeah. just it's very. It's like for someone that you know doesn't get that sort of movie ending all that often. It's you know I'm, I'm looking for like. I'm looking for the cracks. Right. Well, it's not like they discover an amazing new surgery that fixes his face. He's still... He's still deformed, yes. And he's still going to find issues throughout his life dealing with that. Mm. Yeah. Because, uh, as we know, people can be dicks. And- yeah, and this movie... Um, so, it's obviously set in a school. And I think outside of the um, very specifics of, of Augie's um, situation, everyone's been bullied at a certain point. And I think everyone can relate to how that feels to be yeah. an outsider where you've got people ganging up on you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the film really succeeds because ultimately it's probably a metaphor about just being happy with who you are. That's probably what the movie's yeah. about. But then at, at the same time, it's um, incredibly inviting to just sort of go like, I could have been any one of those kids or that kid. And it's just like, everyone's people can make mistakes as well. Yeah. His best friend is caught saying nasty things behind his back at one point. I, I was never clear as to the reason. I think because he's trying to appear cool to other kids yeah. Is, yeah. is the only reason. And so they have a falling out. And it, and and you see that as this this best friend, I, I do forget the character's name, um, as he realizes what's happened, he feels awful and he has to make up for that mistake. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of like that. That felt It didn't feel forced again. It, that's the word I, I'm going to keep coming back to for this one is genuine. It felt quite natural the way that things unfolded i suppose if i was going to sit here and poke holes in it, and guess what i'm going to probably do that <laughs> um uh, i don't see kids being that nice no and they're not historically yeah. but i liked the emotionally m- mature I, I don't think yeah. It, yeah it was nice to see a movie that gave gave us hope that in an alternate reality maybe kids could make informed decisions mm-hmm. um that, that's poss- possibly where i struggled a bit was i didn't believe that they could have the social and mental maturity to say and act the way that they did when yeah. they realized they were doing silly things they probably should be more like 12 is that um, but are we are we are we out of touch alex because we're we're both past the age of 30 is this is this something in 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 the Zoomer generation that they're actually sort of more in tune with than we were? They probably get more of that training now and that teaching to understand how other people and their emotions and feelings work. I'm guessing, but I I know back in if I when I was in high school, there is no way that you had yeah. that sort of maturity to be able to 
talk your way through the situations <laughs> in this. And and the film's not doing it in a way where the kids are adults and the adults are kids. Yeah. Like the adults in this are adults and they're mature adults and they have their flaws and their strengths as well. Uh, yeah, I, I just... I couldn't quite buy that. that I, everything worked out as well as it could between them. I, I do agree. I mean, they they are having conversations that. Um, I mean, again, Augie is meant to be a scientific genius as well, so he is quite smart. But um, I, I I would take that as the movies basically compressing these things that would have taken weeks for an actual child to figure out. That's true. Into yeah. a conversation for yep. the sake of the movie. Again, this is me giving the movie a lot of leeway in terms of its writing, but that's sort of how I saw it was. It's it's a condensed version yeah, of those yeah. of those issues that would that just occur between children um, when they when they're going to school and growing up. Um, I, I, I I get what you mean. I do get what you mean. They 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 sound like they're much older than they are. Yeah. I mean, what what I did like about this is that Augie wasn't a pushover. Yes, he wasn't mm. thrown into this situation and. The film made us feel for him because he was just so beaten down and everything. Yeah. I think if it was just that, it would be a depressing film. But in this, he 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 bites back. He does. You know, well, not he, in an aggressive way or anything. No. He just does it by being smart. About Even things. in um, when he's having his first tour of the school, when there are three kids, to one you know one becomes his best friend, the other one is the bully character um, because writing and um, <laughs> he the the bullies you know you know biting at him the whole time, and then he does turn around and have that have a comeback at him and it's really good and it sort of puts him in his place um yeah. he, he retaliates later on in the film obviously but that's not the message <laughs> the message is don't be a pushover i did like uh augie's little uh hallucinations if you will yeah i like those right. I mean, especially with the little nasa chatter because he so he's a, obsessed with space and star wars and all that kind of stuff and he and he's always imagining that he's on some kind of space mission isn't he which is terrific yeah. you're talking about augie are you I did relate to his <laughs> level of when when I was a kid, his uh, obsession with Star Wars and mine was probably equal. Mm. I never had a Padawan braid though; I never got that far. Yeah, we used to get around in a in a space helmet. You do. He, th- that's true. I still have my toy lightsaber ready to deploy should you I need to. You certainly do. Um, so no, no quick moves either of you. Is that what you call it? Well, I'm not going to call it a laser sword like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they did that in the last film, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, they call it Laser Sword a few times throughout the That's fine. Star Wars saga. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> uh, where were we? We were talking uh, about... Anyway, he's he's obsessed with space and that's kind of his his escapism kind of thing. And so he, he does sometimes when he's a bit stressed, he takes the advice of his mum, which is imagine where you'd like to be. And he's always like this hero astronaut returning, being cheered down the corridors, you know, with all these people clapping, that kind of thing. And I thought that was, you know, interwoven quite nicely throughout the movie. I did, I did like his little analogy about, you know, Chewbacca. Yeah. You know, we all think Chewbacca's cool, but if you walk down a street, people would stare at him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what he sort of had to compare himself to, and, and then they hold hands walking through the school. Oh, it was really sweet. Uh, which like, brings oh. us to our next point: Where did everyone cry? Oh. Probably just for the last half an hour straight. Okay. <laughs> just just okay. that whole half hour. Yep. Yeah. I don't think I had a dry eye moment. I, uh, I definitely, I was definitely like proper crying. Like we're talking having to wipe my eyes because I couldn't see <laughs> crying. <laughs> like I, I need to make sure I'm watching this, but it's making me cry. I, it's funny. Like I was trying to explain to someone how, how much I cried during this movie, but that it wasn't a bad thing. Like it's a happy cry. Yeah, in a way, like mm. it, it, there are there are definitely sad bits in this, like when the when their dog dies, and you understand how devastating that is just to them as a family because that dog. I think he has a line that whenever he came home from an operation, the dog was there, like yeah. it was a constant. The dog would always be there for him, and so you know that when that dog goes, and you can see the parents worrying about the effect mm. it's going to have, is you understand that it's sort of a it's a change in their household. And it's like what's how is he how are any how's any of them going to react to this? And there's a wonderful moment with Owen Wilson who's crying yeah. late, late at night because the dog's died. And it's like, that's a really nice... I mean, don't get me wrong, it's sad, but it's a really nice little character moment. And mm. I really liked how they had the, They gave these different these characters... You see them being fully supportive, but then you also get to see them alone or when they think they're alone and how they're dealing with certain stresses. I thought it was really nice. I had a bit of a, a cry when I do a little bit of a flashback to where the, the daughter... And the grandmother are, are talking on the beach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and probably, um, you know, me immediately after Augie's first day at school, 
and just seeing the the sort of fallout from how terrible of a day he's having. Yeah. And uh, not just not just Augie's reaction, but also the parents' reaction to it as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, the film is very much about how they struggle with uh, with what he goes through, trying to be a support all the time. And then the poor daughter, the, yeah. old, the, old, the older sister, uh, who has to come to terms with pretty much being in the shadow since he was born. Yeah. And, and sort of being alone as well because like her yeah. main friendship has sort of deteriorated. F- falls apart. Mm. and then, But we see that little redemption arc where the sister gets her moment in the in the spotlight, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought all of that was really nice. Like It, it never felt forced. Yeah. It never uh, felt, you should feel good about this. Here you go. Yeah, or you should feel guilty. You know, no, like there that, was yeah. no, for me, there was no chocolate success moment where you're like, oh, I have to eat get to eat the chocolates now because that makes me feel good. Some 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 of those were pushing it for me. Really? Okay. Like uh where, where like, the, like the happiness? Yeah. 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 Just general general happiness. <laughs> general, it's just, the, just the difficult to understand. I was really suspicious of I got a warm feeling in my chest and I'm like, this this is definitely a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I weed a little bit as well. Um, the, like the the scene where the, the friend pulls out of the play and so that the, the daughter can go on and be the star. Okay. I, was like, I was like, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. That's that's fine. It's the power of friendship, Steve. That's fine. We're getting to 90 minutes here. Let's, let's, <laughs> okay. I, um, so I wonder if talking of the last half hour, we're talking about how, you know, Again, this is a time talk, so I think we were okay with spoilers. But things are going really well. And I think, wow, this feels like the natural ending to this movie. And then he goes on a school camp. And I immediately became worried. I thought, no, 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 no. (laughs) The movie stops now. And it kept going. I thought something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And and he and, and his mate do go for a stroll in the woods. And some bullies, older bullies, an older, a higher year level, find them, these bullies. And... I, I was just terrified. I thought, is this movie going to pull the rug out from under my feet yeah. and have a really dark ending? That's what I was expecting. Yeah, and I, and I but I, I was like, my heart was pounding. Yeah. I was legitimately terrified that they were going to hurt this sweet boy. I thought there was going to be a My Girl incident here where there was going to be like some bees or something like that and he was going to be allergic to bees or like... Oh no, Augie, your surgery didn't take. Uh, you got like. Three it was going to go all promising young woman on us. Yeah, there's like a, even a scene in that bully scene where the best friend falls on the ground and smacks his head. I'm yes, like, I was like, he's dead. And, he's and dead. when he says, and he stands up here, you know, does the whole you know hand behind the head. Oh no, you're bleeding. I thought he's going to die. I was like, this is a Chekhov gun, Chekhov's gun thing. That uh, are they? Are they? Did they have that written down that he's going to die? And they just backed out of it at the last minute. I, I, I'm glad that oh, the film has yeah. its happy ending. I was terrified that this movie was going to take me on on this really uplifting journey, which I was 100% on board with, and then just leave me as a mess, having done something yeah. horrible to one of the main characters. I, I, I was, I was uh, terrified that that was going to happen. They would have... Uh, I, you know, I, I'm suspicious that perhaps that ending does exist in a, in a, <laughs> in a Snyder cut somewhere. <laughs> And uh, well, at least but in Chomsky, but didn't cut. The, but the audience reactions to that yeah. would be D- test audiences would not. I, I would be nah. furious yeah. if I got through an hour and a half and that was the ending. I thought you're kidding. I mean, much like when we saw Promising Young Woman, we thought that that ending was just out of nowhere and a bit like I, I don't know. I can't remember exactly what we said, but I do. I personally remember thinking like that's the ending to this movie. Yeah. You know, and I'd, I'd hate for this to have the same thing. On reflection, I think it would have made that sort of the graduation scene a lot more. Uplifting? So what, it's what, uplifting he, enough as what, it is. If, if his mate had died, yeah, no, he's he, he's he is uh, what do you call it? He has continued on or through all this adversity, like through all this bullying, and like his friend dies. It doesn't need and, any more and, adversity. Look, Steve, what we don't need any more of. Because one is enough is Bridge of Te- Bridge to Terabithia. We I've need, never seen that film. That movie is much like what we're describing, going really, really well. And then one of them dies, and the rest of the movie is really sad. Dickens. We don't want more of that. But this is what I'm saying. I'm very, I'm caught off guard by how positive the film is. I loved it. It honestly felt like I was having a warm hug. The in- well, I mean, there are uncomfortable moments where, you, where you, he's challenged. Obviously, mm. I'm not saying it's it's all a smooth ride, but it's it's the ending is really uplifting, and I loved how happy it was. And I suppose we can thank Jason. Yes. Who who, uh, who requested this film? 
Um, and as is tradition, Jace comes from the fine city of Adelaide that you can find in South Australia. In Australia with a population of between one and two million people, is that about correct? Sure. It has the River Torrens, the lofty ranges and beaches. That is Adelaide. Don't forget about a north-south corridor. North-south corridor. Oh, north-south corridor. Uh, yeah. One of the world's, one of two O-barns in the world. Uh, we've got uh, mangroves. Uh, actually, when's this coming? I probably don't have mangroves by then. Uh, <laughs> an uh, airport. A seaport. The sea a there. wine region. Uh, two wine regions. Several wine regions. Um, dust. Uh, we have lots of dust. The best cigarettes you'll find anywhere? Uh, um, a tram that's only got one sort of way. Yeah, can't yeah. turn right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think uh, that's... A few hospitals. Yeah. Potentially a stadium at some point. A couple of mm-hmm. mediocre football teams. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's Adelaide. What's what's the Adelaide... What's the current Adelaide uh, tourist motto? I can't remember what it is. Uh, Where are you? Something like that. I don't know. Wasn't there a very crude one recently? There was, but that wasn't an actual tourism commission. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Anyway. anyway. So, anyway. Yeah, so, Jay, so, see you in the NT. It, it, <laughs> Uh, that was Northern Territory. That was Northern Territory. And, and that was... we took it as well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Um, I, I do want to thank Jason for requesting this because, like I said at the beginning, having seen that trailer back in 2017, this is not a movie I would ever have sat down to watch of my own volition. No. I, I, again, the, I, I like the story, and, but I just that trailer ruins it. And I think <laughs> watch this movie without seeing the trailer because the trailer literally gives you everything that's in the film and takes away some of the for me i think that would take away a lot of those su- heartwarming surprise one on one character moments i think um i the trailer just bugs me yeah. and it stopped me watching this movie for 4 years and i'm and i'm now so glad i've seen it i was like well, i would have loved to have seen this you know 4 years earlier than that i have yeah. well in that case, you feel like you're coming to a conclusion there, perhaps. Do we want to... Uh, Are you putting words in my mouth? I'll put more than that. <laughs> oh, um, oh, oh. We... A rating, may, A perhaps. rating, perhaps. Mayhaps. Yes. Uh, out of... Out of uh, Surgeries? Space, space helmets. Oh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, he's not wrong. Padawan braids. <laughs> Padawan braids. Uh, oh, I think we go space, space helmets, don't we? Yeah, all right, space helmets. Okay. Uh, dead dogs. Oh, Jesus. It's not John Wick. <laughs> By the way, the VFX to do the space helmet and not see a dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, not... I did like the montage of the dog dying. Yes, <laughs> the uh, not seeing the camera and the reflection of the visor was very well done. Mm. Anyway, that's just something that I noticed. <laughs> I should point out that there is no montage of the dog dying. That was a bad joke. <laughs> I think in the book because this is based on a book. Just yes. in case that we had the in the book, the whole dog thing is a lot more significant. Okay, because it's, it's almost a unnecessary in this you know uh. uh, I, I liked that it, it challenged their their this was all about him having his comforts from the mm. last however many years taken away one by one like the comfort yeah. of staying at home the comfort of the helmet the comfort of this support animal is essentially what a pet is um, well I'm being blunt <laughs> but yeah um, that that dog he always looked forward to seeing the dog when he, what <laughs> Are we, I don't know actually <laughs> the way he said support dog I was like support animal is that it's a guy like dog <laughs> are we are we Matthew's support animals is that <laughs> yeah, is that why we um, exist I do lead him around my, <laughs> no but my my point is is that he has these comforts <laughs> taken away as the movie goes on it was a bit um, weird when he tried to put a leash on you the other day that was a bit strange no I consented. Oh. <laughs> We're talking about this wonderfully, you know, coming of age, innocent, <laughs> sweet movie, and I think we've had more innuendos in this one episode than across our entire I came <laughs> that day. Uh, oh, <laughs> I am so sorry, everyone. <laughs> did we agree on space helmets? Oh, no, Can't I think we did. <laughs> you space cadet. <laughs> You can cut around it. Or just bleep me then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave that in. And uh, if you found that offensive, you can send an email to Matt. No, right. to Steve. <laughs> He's the one that said it, not me. I you're, just set him up. <laughs> you're responsible for me. though. <laughs> Dickens. Oh, wow. Well. Well, uh, yeah, space helmet. Yeah. Space helmet? Yeah, space helmet, oh, sure. Space uh, out, of, out, of, out of five space helmets, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Uh, I'm going to give it three okay. uh, and a half space helmets. All right. Uh, and that's just because, again, I'm, off co- I'm caught off guard about how positive 
the whole movie <laughs> wraps up. You're, 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 okay? t- you're distrustful of happiness. Okay. Is. Yeah, I am. Okay? Because it's like, even the movie Jack, where Robin Williams is like the, 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 the fast aging child, yep. right? That sort of ends on a, on, a, on a sad note. He gets his diploma and he's like already the age of 80 or something like that. So I, I, like these, these uplifting films usually have this tinge of sadness to it uh-huh. and sort of reinforces how happy the movie is as well. Mm. And this really didn't have that. We were just sort of, okay, Augie graduates the sixth yeah. grade. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And that's that's it. Well, I for one love happiness, and um, as a re- as a result, I honestly was I just love this movie. So I'm not saying it's like breaking the mold or anything. Like it's a pretty straightforward film, but I just I thought it was just so well done and so uplifting. Um, it's a five from me. Wow. Ooh, I, so, well. uh, so I think we all stream this on Netflix because that's where it's currently on. But um, it's not a Netflix original. I will probably buy this on disc. So I can have it in my grubby little hands to keep. Oh, there you I go. liked it that much. I, you know what? I because I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking. It's like, oh, maybe I'm going to give it four and a half because I can't give it five because Steve made some really good points. And I remembered, I just don't trust Steve. Yeah. It's and, true. And you're a fan of true. happiness, sure. And I'm genu- yeah. generally fa- a fan of happiness. <laughs> and then I think like the last thirty minutes of this film, I is probably. It, this film made me the most in a long time make audible sounds that I was not expecting to make during <laughs> scenes in a film. Yeah. I've never heard you happy far before. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a thing. It is. It's a thing. And, Sweet and this release. is very cute. And this made me like do like happy crying laughter. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, emotions. That's mm. right. That's what they are. Mm. And I, it, it's it's just a good movie. Give it's you laugh, give you cry. Give you laugh, give you cry. Yeah. That is the best way to describe it. Absolutely. Mm. So it's a five from me as well. Yay! Dickens. Yeah. Steve, we'll have to work on your happiness uh, opinions. I'm taking ha- pills and everything. Okay. Maybe that's the problem. You're, you can, you're you can, muting your uh, feelings. You can be that support animal that Matt always wanted you to be. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I, I've, been called, uh, I've been called a donkey a lot of times. So a support donkey. Donkeys can be supportive. I can be an ass. There it is. I, was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> if I if I could think of an of, of an animal, it would be like a pack animal of some sort. You would be, uh, yeah. well, like a, a, a beer cat. No, 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 no. I mean, like a pack, as in like a pack horse or a pack dog. Oh, like, you know, I thought you meant like you know part of a herd. A pack beer uh, cat. No, no, just just literally good at carrying like heavy loads due um, to your stout nature. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, a pack dwarf. And you know you're never going to be. Com- <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kind of compact humans. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you, with Steve, you're never going to get complications from emotions. No, that's right. That he's yeah, he's reliable. Yeah, you in, know in what that, his reaction you will use in that sense. Yeah. I really am. Like, I am. I don't have a lot of emotions. I I'm a very selfish person. <laughs> I live on the ground, and I've got a great affinity for gold. So you're Smout the Dragon, <laughs> <laughs> or Gimli, <laughs> or Gimli, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> What a fantastic way to finish off the podcast. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we've been the Trail Island podcast, I guess. Um, Have we? <laughs> this I don't know what this show is evolving into. Yeah, I, it's, we're going down a path. Um, but there's certainly... Uh, we, the feedback is required from the audience. Mm. If you have got this far in the episode... Please feel free to shoot us an email. Send us a message via the Facebook page. You can uh, like us on Facebook. P- please like us. It's where we let you know what episodes we're doing. So if you jump on the Facebook page, uh, we generally put up there what episode we're doing this week and then you can choose to listen. Or it's just a surprise when it pops up <laughs> on, the, on, your, on your Wednesday on your feed. Yeah. Because we're sure you're subscribed. Surely. On whatever platform you're using, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Who would want to miss Steve's difficulty with experiencing emotion? Uh... My therapist? <laughs> As the, your, your bowels gurgle to the surface. That's the back of my throat. Uh, you know, I think the only thing that would take away from my five-star rating in this is is the trailer. It really yeah. is the trailer. It's not I, a very good trailer. It's not a good trailer, and it's such a shame because such a strong movie. Yes, yes. Well, we've been the Trailer Island Podcast. I've been Alex. I was joined by... Matthew. The man who broke Owen Wilson's nose. Oh, Accident, of course. Okay. Well, with your axe? 
No, no. Like he was, he was sort of standing above me. I accidentally stood up too quickly. I just looked. Ow. We're the Trail Island Podcast. Good night. <laughs> this is a Narrative Network podcast.